from the words of St. John Paul II. This is no time to be ashamed of the gospel. It is the time to preach it from the rooftops. Do not be afraid to break out of comfortable and routine modes of living in order to take up the challenge of making Christ known in the modern world. Let us open our ears and our hearts to listen to the answers of our long lost questions. Join us every Wednesday morning at 8 a.m. for Perusia Hour, inviting expert guest speakers every week as we discover the fullness of truth live on the Voice of Charity. Hello and welcome to a very special Perusia Hour. I'm Shabul, your host. I have the two co-hosts. I've got Salwa back in the studio. Salwa, good morning. Hi. Good morning. How Charles. are you? I'm very good. Welcome back very from good. Lebanon. Fresh from the cedars, yes. That's right. Oh, wow. <laughs> good morning, everyone. <laughs> Beautiful. We are Mark Griffin um, on my far left. How are you going, Mark? Oh, Chabelle, very well. Good Fantastic. to be back again. And we have one of our favourites, uh, the one and only dynamic Deacon Harold Burke Sivers is with yes. me. Good morning, Deacon. Good morning. Good morning, Thank everybody. Good morning. Normally, we're listening to you on the on the Morning Glory show on the EWTN uh, platform, and now here you are, live. <laughs> in, That's right. In our studios now. Amen. So, thank you for coming all oh, this way. I'm honored to be here. I always love coming to Australia, and oh. which, by the way, is now the country I've visited the most outside right? the United oh, States well. for speaking. We're it was tied with Singapore, but now with this trip, <laughs> you know, uh, Australia is number one. <laughs> That's good Fantastic. To know. <laughs> well, we've got to get your um, citizenship organized now. <laughs> so become a real Aussie. That'd be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> now, you are here on Pilgr- uh, You are here because of the pilgrimage. So, we've mm. got a pilgrimage coming up. I don't know how quick I can put uh, Jess on the spot here, but uh, the Perusia pilgrimage is the first one we've ever done. We're going to Lords and Fatima. And on your screen, you can see Visitations of Mary. It's a 12 day pilgrimage, Marian pilgrimage. And we're going to, to Fatima first. Let me go through this. That's great, Jessica. If you'd leave it there for a sec. I'm going to read this out. We're going to start in Lisbon. We're going um, Fatima on the anniversary of the apparition. So the 13th of September, we will be there. So we're going to be there for three days in Fatima. Avila for two days. So St. Therese, of course. We're Segova, Santo Domingo de Silos. We're going to go to Talaruga. Is that how I say that? Loyola. So St. Ignatius of Loyola. We're going to be in Lourdes of course, uh, and then the Montserrat, and we end in uh, Barcelona. So there's basically Portugal, France, and Spain we'll be covering. There's an optional extra, five extra nights you've been from Barcelona to go to Lyon, Para la Menial, uh, Ars, Taze, the Nevers, Chartres Cathedral, and then uh, Lisieux as well, and end in Paris. <coughs> there is still time, believe it or not. There is space. If you have your passport ready to go and you get in touch with us right now, I, I understand we can take a handful more people. So don't miss out this opportunity. Very, very well priced. I mean, landed is only 4190 That is everything included once you've landed. That's the food, the local um, uh, accommodation. That is even – they include tips to the restaurants and things on that so everyone is looked after. Now, what you can also – the airfares are around $2,000 from Sydney to their return – so Harvest do the whole lot for you. So it's around 6100 all in from Sydney, all of that and back. So that's quite exciting. Yeah, it is. Wow. It's going to be uh, – and I love the, the fact that it's a, a Marian pilgrimage. Yes. You know, um, it, it kind of it's called Visitations of Mary. Um, following the apparitions, you know, of our Blessed Mother appearing and uh, giving us messages of hope and also challenging us. Yes. You know, to hey, we need to step it up here. You know, um, God wants to bring everyone into heaven with Him, but you know, but we have to make sure that the gospel is being proclaimed. And right. who, what better evangelizer than the Blessed Virgin Mary? Amen you know, um, and for me, you know, I found in my life Mary has a special place. You know, uh, for for example, I was born in Barbados, and I'm actually the first baptized Catholic. I was baptized in Our Lady, Queen of the Universe parish in, in, a, in a, a section of Barbados in Bridgetown called Black Rock in that neighborhood. That's where the church is. Right. So, and when we came to the United States, I, my parish was Christ the King, the son of Mary. 
right? Um, when I went to uni, to uni, I was at the University of Notre Dame, our mother. Yeah. You know, uh, when I was in a monastery, the, the name of the church, the monastery was St. Mary's. You know, I was ordained a deacon in the Immaculate um, Conception Cathedral. And I serve now in my parish in Oregon, Immaculate Heart of Mary. <laughs> so come on, man. It's like, like my you. whole life, Mary has literally been there from my baptism all the way till now. You know, and so what a way, I think, to honor the Blessed Mother who always leads us to her son. Yes. So this is not about a pilgrimage where we're worshiping Mary. I, I think some people, no. Yeah, you know, like if a Protestant hears this, what is of Mary, what is that about? You know, it's about listening to what she said. The, the last thing she says in Scripture is do whatever he tells you. Yes. You know, because she's always leading us and directing us toward her son. Mm-hmm. And so I think going on this pilgrimage and, you know, become uh, moving deeper into intimacy with Christ through the apparitions and through the appearances of the mm-hmm. Blessed Virgin Mary, you know, because the mother always wants to, you know, lead her children to yes. deeper love of God, and that's what she's doing, and and that's why I'm so thrilled about this. Uh, Super opportunity. excited! This love is, for more people to come so with this us. Is so. it. We've got some room, so yeah, get in touch with us. Uh, Harvest journeys as well. Um, super excited. The tour as well. We call it the pre pilgrimage tour. Um, and so we've already been giving a few talks already. Uh, you've you've been at Our Lady Level. Now tell us about this experience. On the screen now, that's the graphic of the pre-pilgrimage tour um, that we've started on Sunday, the 27th or 25th of August, actually, and gone, we're going all the way to the 9th. Um, so that's the day we leave of September. We've got over 14 or 15 events uh, that, are, that are all public, not including the schools, not including um, the university campuses that we're speaking to. Um, and some other private events. It's just been amazing, so non-stop. But let's talk through just what's happened so far. Um, tell us about what a weekend. <laughs> yeah. Um, so when you travel as much as I do, problems are inevitable. Yeah. You know, I, I travel about 350,000 kilometers a year. And so, uh, you know, and so, you know, we're preparing for this. I, I got my ETA, yes. you know, I did yeah. everything to prep for this and was packed and ready to go. And then I get an email from the airline, the flight's delayed an hour, then okay. two hours, then three hours, <laughs> then four hours. I'm like, uh oh. So I called you, yeah. called Charbel, said, uh, we got a problem here because yeah. I'm missing my connecting yeah. flight to Sydney. And uh, so uh, you got on the phone with Harvest, and I got on the phone with uh, Try to Fly Alternatives, Delta, or uh, Qantas. Yes. I was on the phone with Qantas. And eventually we uh, went with Honolulu Airlines. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so I flew from Portland, Oregon to Los Angeles. I spent the night in Los Angeles, flew to Honolulu, Hawaii, and then to Sydney. And then it was a miracle. Yeah. Uh, in all the 16 countries I've traveled to, I've never been through customs and immigration this fast. <laughs> I literally got off the plane, walked, you know, the long gauntlet you have to walk to get to customs, got there, there were like six or seven lines. I just chose this line. I was the first one. The lady said, just wave me to the front. I went up there, gave my passport and my card. She just, she didn't even stamp the passport. Yeah. She just, what the up? I went through. I was like, okay. I walked the thing. My bag was right there. Yeah. Grabbed the bag, went out, gave the guy my card and walked right. I'm like, you got to be kidding me, man. I mean, I've never been through that fast before. It was miraculous. And was able to get to Our Lady of Lebanon for that the night. for the speaking yeah. engagement. You, you were supposed to get here with 12, 13 hours to spare before the engagement. And as it turned out, you were still on the plane an hour before it was supposed to start. <laughs> yeah. 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 It just landed. So, yeah. wow. Not many people on this planet can do, do that and, 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 well, and still that, give the energy. Yeah. And we live stream that. That's actually available on the on the Facebook page. People can can experience yeah. that talk. Uh, Two hundred young people, young adults, and on fire. Uh, then we, then you obviously you, you didn't even back up. I mean, we stayed a couple of hours after you answering questions. Mm-hmm. It was so powerful. Got home late, and then uh, the next day we showed you the Cradio offices. So we are airing right now on Cradio, and if you have not yet subscribed to that, I mean that's a twenty four hour service, and and we're, we're blessed to have that as a service over 3,000 podcasts and there'll be more coming so watch your space but we saw the Cradio office and then we um, we had a, a special dinner with supporters of our those who have been donating and, and, and supporting Perusia we want to say thank you to them and it was nice to have around you know close to 40 of our friends and, and you addressed the whole pro-life topic on that night on Monday which was really 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 powerful and then on uh, Tuesday which is only well yesterday those who get this on the email a couple of days ago but 
this week you were at Bethlehem um, College, 600 high schoolers, year seven and eight students from across all the Sydney Catholic schools Beautiful. come together to hear you speak. And the topic was, what's the big deal about the Mass of White Matters? Tell us about that event. That was that was a, a great day. Yeah, that was great. I, I love talking to young people, you know, yeah. Yeah. especially about the Mass. <laughs> so it's like, oh no, he's gonna to talk to us about the mass. Oh, I'd rather be back in school than listen to this, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but it was great. So I went out there in my usual style, you know, and and uh, the kids were like, whoa, <laughs> they're like taking it back, like we didn't expect this, you know. And just but but the the points I was making, you just see the lights go on for mm-hmm. a lot of these young people. Mm-hmm. Like, whoa. I never made that connection with the mass before. Like, whoa, I never thought the word of God could impact me like this. You know, you can see. And then afterward, the kids that came up to me, they were so grateful, like, oh, I finally understand the Mass a lot better. Uh, in fact, one the, the young man who actually served at the Mass that followed the talk, he's talked to me for like five, six minutes. He was just so, he goes, that was awesome. He goes, I was sitting there going, I didn't know what to expect. And he started making the connections. I was like, I'm, I was like going to, yes, like, I, yes. you know, I get it. So I'm actually going to start doing it when I go to Mass now. Like, that's the... That's where the rubber hits the road right there, you know? So what all I try to do in my talks is to connect this beautiful, deep, rich faith to the everyday lived experience so that the faith doesn't just become some theological idea, you know, that's lofty, you know, the academic. You have to bring it down to the level, you know, because that's what Jesus did. Mm. The word became flesh. Yes. You know, it's like. Trying to, uh, God coming down to us is like us trying to talk like a kindergartner. You know, God yeah. coming down to, to our level. But that's what we have to do. We have to take the faith and we have to connect the head with the heart so people have a holistic experience of a personal relationship with Jesus Christ that's rooted in a faith that makes complete sense mm-hmm. and it's connected with their life. So it's integrated. Yes. Yes. So it's not just, okay, I'm, I'm Catholic on Sunday, but I do what I want the rest of the week. You know, it's like, no, I'm Catholic. 24-7, 365. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and the decisions that I make in my life, it's like the hub, and our faith is the hub, and the spokes of the wheel of our life come out from that hub. So is this the person I'm going to marry, spend the rest of my life with? Am I being called to the priest of religious life? Is this the uni that I'm supposed to go to? Uh, what decision am I make about what am I going to do with the rest of my life? All that flows from this core Yes. Of a deep, intimate, personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And when you start to live like that, your whole life is transformed. You know, mm-hmm. and, and that's Absolutely. what I try to impart in, in the presentations that I that I make. Wow. What young, a blessing. Young people need to hear that. That's yes. what makes them love the Mass and then participate in the Mass. That's why the churches are depleting in numbers because yeah, they connected. don't understand the mass because the adults don't their parents don't yeah. in fact the teachers came up to me afterward and saying wow that was great yes. and so you made some connections that I never thought about before yeah. I'm like yeah that's yeah. the point you know because it's, you, we go to mass every week we see this stuff every week and we don't stop to think what are, what is he doing what does yes. that mean what what does that action say about who we are how does that impact my life every day we don't think in those terms about mm. the mass mm. but that's exactly what Christ is doing he's feeding us and nourishing us and preparing us to go out and live a eucharistic faith in the world yes. you know that's why the, i mean we receive the eucharist and then what happens you get kicked out get out of here yeah. <laughs> ite misa es go you are sent you know, you just received Jesus' word and sacrament. Now go be Eucharist to the world. Yeah. That's the mission. That's, that's it. You know? Yeah. That's it. It's got to impact our, our lives. And, and that flows on to the way we interact with people and, and everything we do. Well, and that's um, why I think Perusia is so powerful. I mean, all my products are developed by Perusia Media, distributed all over the world. You know? And that's That's, that's a awesome. privilege, by the way. Well, well no. Well, I mean, well, it's, it's, it's fantastic. And in the States, people, I mean, it's, it's, it's professional. It's packaged beautifully. People see it. You know, they read the scripture on the back. They ask me a few questions about it. And then they buy three, four, six, seven at a time. Right. You know, um, which was, <laughs> I was at a parish in Illinois um, uh, for uh, uh, a Lenten mission. And this uh, mother had brought this son. The son did not want to go at all. His, he goes, oh, and mother begged the son to come. Whatever, mom, I'll come to the talk. <laughs> the so after, the, the, talk, talk. after <laughs> the talk, the kid came up to the table. He goes, mom, I want this one and this one and this one. And, this one. and he bought like 10 CDs. And then I got an email later from the mom. He goes, he downloaded them onto his phone and he's listening to you every single day. 
I mean, it's, well, it's, it has nothing to do with me. I'm just the instrument. God's the musician. Yes. You know? And so what we have to do in partnership with Perusia is that we're the instruments, right? So we have to make sure, like any instrument, you have to take care of it. Yes. Yeah. If it's a string instrument, you have to change the strings. You have to what, get the dust off. You have to make sure the instrument's in tune properly so that it functions the way it's supposed to work so that the music can have impact in people's lives. So Perusia really, and, 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 and the work that we're doing together, we're instruments, and uh, you're helping to tune what I'm doing in the Lord's Vineyard to really reach people um, literally all over the world, which is just I mean, incredible. That actually leads us nicely into the latest that we have in your resource range, and that's all these individual talks that you're speaking of that have been available for so long on CD. We've now got on one device, on one USB device. So instead of buying 21, 22, 23, however many talks there have been over the years, there's this device now. It's got 21 of your presentations there on one device. You can plug it into your phone, your computer, you can plug it into your car and just hit play, off it goes. And it's just fantastic. It's all there in, in one place. And because it's on one device, it's a big bulk pack, we can heavily discount the price as well. So it's really exciting that we're able to, to I suppose, meet the world where it's at. CDs, whilst there is still a market for CDs, people still buy CDs. We're acknowledging that more and more people are transitioning to different formats. And so being able to to, to meet them where they're at is really exciting that we, we have the opportunity to just to, to keep up with them as well and, and keep yes. these resources out there. Are they online, by the way? Are they are online. Um, Can we pull them up now? Yeah, on, um, a, on the Perusia Jess, store page. We'll love doing this to again. Jess. Uh, <laughs> she is. Uh, so <laughs> yeah. so Every time this happens, she breaks into a sweat. <laughs> <laughs> but if we went to the Perusia shop, we want to show you something. This is Brandy. Deacon actually hasn't, um, he's just seen them for the first time. It was a nice surprise, surprise. to show us. Yes, <laughs> but, absolutely. But all of the CDs that Deacon Harold has is now in a USB format. So you go to our perusiamedia.com website, you click on the store button. And oh, then right there. Right, right there, there new sorry. release. If you click on, let's say, the first one with the key ring on it, um, this is 22 talks of Deacon Harold. And if we can enlarge the um, image there. And what you've got, it will pop up. There it is. You've got the Perusia logo on one side, the Deacon Harold logo on the other. And not only is it a USB, which what they call the USB-B, I think it's called, the, the, the standard Just USB. The standard USB. It's got USB Type-C, and that's the latest. It, it actually swivels around, and you can pop it in Mac computers. It actually fits in my phone. Uh, I've got my phone. Samsung phones fit. Uh, Android phones, and you can awesome. just go straight in. It's a key ring. In fact, the next version of the iPhone awesome. is moving from the FireWire to the U new USB. Well, perfect. We're in for the next uh, next generation Beautiful. of iPhone. Well, we're, we're so, in touch with yeah. that now. So it's got the full list of talks that Jess is scrolling through there. Family life, praying with confidence, apologetics awesome. 101. Wow, I've never seen this before. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's the full, the full, um, wow. the full presentation. Awesome. Pursuit of happiness, wow. one of my favorites. Um, so when you load it, can you go and choose which talk you want to hear? They're all there as individual tracks. So you can wow. either put into a vice and it auto plays right through, or you can go and select which track oh, you're up to awesome. and listen that's to it. Awesome. And the, the, awesome. other, the other beauty of this is rather than just give you this on the device, we've actually put it on a device that's intentionally too big. So you can use the USB. There's a separate compartment. It's got 11 gig of space free for your own wow. documents and whatever as well. So that's also included within the device. Yeah, whack it on your key rings. No extra cost. So it's something you can carry around in your key ring. You've got all this this faithful nation resource there, ready to go. Plus, you've got this device which you can use for your own purposes. So eleven as well. gigs, eleven. Of uh, personal it's actually just over. I'm, I'm rounding down. Actually, it's, yeah. it's wow. just over eleven gig free. How much wow. is it? So f the, the strain, strain dollars forty nine ninety nine. I could That's what I thought. I thought. Am I seeing things? <laughs> <laughs> it should be like a few hundred. Yeah. Well, yeah. Much. I mean, normally in the states that would be two hundred and ten dollars. Easy. For US. For that US. That's right. US. Two hundred and ten dollars. Yeah. US. So for under fifty dollars, you get all of these talks. Yes. That's fantastic. We're giving you away, Deacon. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but no, it's important. We need to get the uh, the truth out there. We need people to yeah. be impacted and. We need to eliminate all the obstacles, you know, and, and, mm. and, and let them have it in whatever format is right. Uh, the other thing, it works so nicely in the car. You pop it in and it just auto plays, as you're saying. You can skip through and it just works like a gem. That's not the only USB. There is the other one. And we touched on the mass. Um, you developed an actual, not only a talk on the mass, which is one of my favorite. Um, you also done a booklet. And can you explain about that? What I'll ask Jess to do, that other USB is actually... Um, available now as well and that's 
Mass in Sacred Scripture. Now, what we've it it all stemmed from uh, that booklet you created. Tell us a bit about that, line by line. In- so, when I was in graduate school studying theology, preparing to be ordained as a deacon, uh, Father Mitch Packwell was our scripture professor, and we we were, we were going through the scriptures, and I said, "Hey, wait a minute, we say that at mass." And then we go, oh, wait a minute, we say that at Mass. Wait a minute, we say that at Mass. And so it struck me, I said, I wonder how many scriptures I can find for things we say at Mass. So I started going through and I realized it was every single word that comes out of our mouth is from the Bible. You know, so when they, and, it, and it struck me that when the Bible uh, was, the Mass was put together, that it just wasn't haphazard throwing words together. They actually used scripture. Yes. Because that's, that's that's what they had at the time, and they put the Mass together. So everything from the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit to Amen, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, communion of the Holy Spirit, all of that comes from the Mass. I mean, it comes from the Scripture. Yes. And so I put a booklet together that goes line by line through the entire Mass. And again, this is Western Rite. Yes. It's a Latin, yeah, Latin yeah. Rite Mass, not the Maronite. It's on the screen right now. And it goes line by line. It shows where every line of Mass comes from the Bible. And so also in that book, I do like a, a like an introduction in the beginning. It talks about a little bit of the history of liturgical language change in the church and translations. And then I, the bulk of the book is the, uh, you know, showing where it comes from the Bible, the mass. Then at the end, I have a little Q&A. So if your kids are, why do I have to go to mass? Why is it important? I got an answer. Yeah. <laughs> why is the Eucharist the heart of my life, the center of my life, I have an answer. So I have a little Q&A in the back, too. And that's, that's how that developed. And what we're seeing on screen now is the USB version of this. And when you were here on a previous visit, we actually filmed a video series that you developed around that booklet, um, taking you through the, the contents of that. And it's broken into six videos. We've got an introduction, and then we've got uh, the Liturgy of the Word, Part 1 and Part 2. We've got the Liturgy of the Eucharist, Part 1 and Part 2, and then we've got the Commissioning. So there's six video chapters on that. And once again, they're available in DVD, uh, in, in the original DVD format. And with that DVD, you get a copy of the booklet inside, and you also get an audio CD of you delivering that presentation to an audience, just in a, in a single talk. But this USB version that Jess has got on screen now, you, you get all of that content again, on a USB device, you get the, the six video files, you get the the audio version of, of the talk, you also get the youth one that you were speaking about that you delivered yesterday, the, the big deal about the Mass, so the the same talk just presented to the youth audience, and you get a copy of the ebook on this device, and this one's thirty nine ninety nine. Um, and once again, just available, they only went up on the site yesterday, so uh, another brand new product, and also we've, we've again added a little bit of extra space there so the device is available for your own personal use as well. There's, I think it's it's got about 8 gig available on this one um, in addition to, to all the contents that are on there. So once again, it's it's in this new format. Um, the, the format, we when Dr. Shree was here a couple of months ago, we, we, we produced a USB device for him as well and we completely sold out of those and we've had to restock. And, and this format is proving popular. So once again, yes. we, we've gone down that. We've, we've listened to what people are saying and, and we've produced it in this format as well. So hopefully we can, we can get this one out there as well. It's a fantastic program. It's all, all filmed here in Australia. And, uh, yeah, really excited to see this one spread as well. Absolutely. Yes. Super excited about that. Oh, I and am that, too. And that launches the brand new series, which we, we've never launched yet. So this is it. it. Uh, this is on the mass, a whole series, which we filmed uh, uh, in your previous visits, and we went to multiple locations. So this is going to be quite mm. a, a good series on the mass. Um, so super excited. Well, I've only gotten to day two on the tour. I mean, I haven't even uh, gone through it all, but... I want to invite everyone, get onto the uh, Perusia Media website, go to the events page, and every single event of Deacon Harold's up there. Um, last night was at St. Jerome's. Uh, Beads for the Battle, fantastic talk, fantastic night, a couple hundred people there. Yeah. Um, and again, that was streamed on our Facebook page, so you can watch that. The, then today, uh, or tonight, we are at St. Joseph's in Croydon. We're speaking about your sins are forgiven, so the forgiveness, and how we're, uh, we're, we're in a world where we're screaming for healing and, and forgiveness, and how many people are pain and suffering talking the power of forgiveness is, is quite powerful i'm looking forward to tonight um and then uh the women's retreat tomorrow an all-day retreat for women please get down that's at marymount mercy center in castle hill and then thursday night at uh it's on the mass so this is the one we've been talking about mm-hmm. at uh, st bernadette's in castle hill so adults get to to experience that sunday uh, friday day is at el phoenician 1 p.m and and you can register there just let us know if you're coming uh, lunch is, is, is part of that. 
and then at night we are at Grey Stains, and that's the Parramatta Diocese are putting on a, a an evening uh, for marriage about marriage, and um, you'll be speaking there. We've already got a couple hundred registrations, and that should be a, a nice big night. Um, that's only halfway through the tour. <laughs> So I'm exhausted. I'm not going to get here. <laughs> then you go down to Albury and yeah. Wagga. Speaking to seminarians down there, you're speaking to families from school down there, uh, and then you're coming back. We're going to visit um, the, the 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 fathers of Pauline, the the Polish fathers, the Pauline Pauline Penrose Park, Pen- Park Shrine. Yeah, yeah, the Penrose Park Shrine, and then coming back to Canterbury Leagues Club. So this fathers on tap. So this would be great for any dads out there. Um, Deacon knows how to do it, and you know you can grab a beer, grab some, grab something in a relaxed environment. Canterbury Leagues um, is a great environment there, and you can um, yeah, enjoy a talk there. I think we're over there's a hundred fathers at the moment registered, and I think we'll be more that'll build as we get there. Um, don't forget Tuesday, of course, we've got a um, Tuesday night, and that would be at the uh, Croatian Community Centre. That's in Summerhill, so that's a men's night. So that. That's for single men as well as married men and, mm-hmm. and all men to get get inspired there. You're back in here next week, and uh, don't forget, we'll be launching um, my book. And so you wrote the forward to my book, and we'll talk about that mm-hmm. next week. But uh, it's, it's a privilege to have you, and we're going to swap roles <laughs> yeah. uh, next week. Um, and then on uh, Wednesday night, Guardians, the apocalyptic awakening, um, about almost about Our Lady's importance at the end time. So I'm mm-hmm. very interested about that. Thursday, you go back down south, Mossvale, um, and we're going to do a full-day retreat there, um, and that's quite exciting. And then back up on Friday for the Fire Up Ministries dinner, you're giving a, a first talk, the law of attraction, how men and male and female are complementary. Then on Saturday, there's a family afternoon at the Menai Parish, two talks there, one on, on family life and one on the Mass. That's before then the Vigil Mass, so come down to there at the Holy Family Parish in Menai. starts at 230 and then uh, on Sunday, we've got two, two venues. We've got Blacktown, uh, Mary, Queen of the Family Parish. You're giving two talks. So you're preaching at the, uh, the Mass. You're going to give the homily. After that, there's going to be the talk uh, for family life. Um, and then we'll have a lunch break. And then in early afternoon, we're going to have a talk on the pursuit of happiness. So that's, that's again, up there with one of my favorites. Then we're going to go for the finale is at the Hills Parish, Maronite Parish, Christ the Redeemer Parish, Why Wait? Um, a talk on uh, the Catholic teaching on sex and dating. So that's going to be quite fun and exciting. And you, uh, you, you're most lively in that talk. I've seen you uh, really <laughs> fire up in that one and have a lot of fun with. Um, and, and I encourage anyone there to go. There's a lot there. I've just rattled it off. Well um, done to you for remembering. No, yeah. <laughs> Doing it all the time. The same thing. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we go over this all the time. But. What um, before we go, we usually go on a break, but before we have a caller, why don't we go to that caller and then um, if you want to call in as well, nine six two five six triple one, all are welcome. And I've got live Facebook, and I'm noticing the names and welcome those. I, I see a fellow family member from Colombia and uh, Miami, and we've got some other people. Well, well done and welcome. And feel free to post a question, and I'll ask on your behalf. But John Claude, um, good morning. Good morning, guys. Thank you for calling in. Damon Delay. Glory to God. Always to God. Amen. Amen. Um, so I said thank you all for being here early in the morning on the trip. I can't hear you. Uh, um, I was listening to the, um, the source that you've given us, you know, the maps on USB or the maps in a book. I was hoping maybe to kickstart the conversation. If you could take us through a basis or a history or where in the Bible communion and comes from, only because... Being married, you know, we kind of get the you know, taste of both, both cultures or both rights. Uh, you know, I did a long time, but you know, a lot of people that push this community on the hand, um, you know, in our regular churches. So I would love maybe to be, maybe have a comment on that. Thank you very much. All right, thank you for your call, John. So communion in the hand is the question. Yeah. You know, where did um, that come from? And yeah, so, so um, in the early church, uh, communion in the hand was allowed. In fact, um, one of the early uh, uh, apostolic fathers talked about creating a throne with your hands upon which the king of the universe resides. So the idea was you make a throne with your hands and then you, you receive in the hand. Now that was stopped 
because there were abuses mm -hmm. of the Eucharist, you know, people taking the Eucharist and, you know, that kind of thing. Or, or even today, you know, this happened in my own parish where a witch came in and tried to steal the host, um, you know, uh, by receiving it in the hand and tried to walk out with it to wow. use for their, their ceremonies. Um, so, so that practice was stopped and, re and reception on the tongue uh, was the norm for a long time until uh, the, or at least in the States in the early 70s. Um, when it came back, there was an option you could receive either way. I personally did not receive in the hand. Um, I never received in the hand. I always received on, on the tongue. And, uh, um, you know, I, I again, the church allows both, okay? okay? I personally do not like reception in the hand myself. But, the, but Holy Mother Church allows for both ways, and it's up to the person who's receiving communion how they want to receive the Lord. You know, but um, but I think... Uh, theologically, I think there's more deeper meaning and significance by receiving kneeling and on the tongue, you know, because you were, I mean, we really believe that that is Jesus Christ's body, blood, soul, mm -hmm. divinity. And we have to give our Lord the awe and the respect that he deserves, that he loves us so much that he gives himself to us as food to prepare us for eternal life. Yes. And so we need to receive him. Uh, not, also be received them internally in the sense that we have to be in a state of grace, have gone to s confession so that we're internally, spiritually ready to receive him. But then also we're, we're human beings with bodies. Mm -hmm. And so our bodies have to reflect the reverence that we're in which we're receiving our Lord. And sometimes I mean, I've been to, to, to school masters, for example, where after mass is over, there's hosts on the floor. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, so... <laughs> So the whole reception in the hand thing, I think, lends itself to some disrespect of the Eucharist, especially in you here in the States now, how um, only 30% of people, Catholics, believe that Jesus is actually present in the Eucharist. So if you don't believe it, then how are you going to receive him with any kind of reverence and awe? That's right. You know, so personally, uh, I always receive on the tongue, but the church allows both as long as you receive the Lord reverently. And, you know, you consume the Eucharist before you walk away uh, from the from the priest or the deacons distributing communion. That's the problem there. Not everyone consumes the host before walking away, and there's no one to stop them. Well, I, I, I stop. If I stop. see that, I yeah. will stop somebody. I've actually yeah. seen no priests follow someone down the aisle yeah. because they I've haven't done that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I've, I've done that. I've had to do that too, and I think that's an awful experience to have to do that. So, the, you know, the Maronite Church now, thank God, um, is encouraging only communion on the tongue. The Maronite Parish in Portland does uh, intention. Yes, same so thing. They, so they take mm -hmm. the host and dip That's in the right. precious so blood. And, no and you can't option. receive in the hand. Yes. It's, it, it, it just, that doesn't that, lend that itself to reception in the hand. Mention of that the, in there, the there, there was. Um, it's not compulsory. The priest actually announces if you prefer not to receive communion on the tongue, then go to one of the acolytes. Uh, because oh, they're, they're not all intenting. Only the priest is uh, intenting. Yes, that's correct. Yes. Same thing at yes. the Maronite so Church in Portland. The priest that's right. intenting. The in, that's right. right, correct. So the priest correct. actually announces that at the Mass. If you wish to receive in your hand, please go to an acolyte. Oh, interesting. Because there is only communion on the tongue with the priest uh, and the intention. So the Maronite Church does allow both? Uh, it's allowing both because of the people. Mm. That's a thing. Well, I personally would prefer to go back just receiving on the tongue, Absolutely. kneeling, or <laughs> Absolutely. make a, a sign of reverence before receiving our yeah. Lord. You yeah. know, um, but that's just again that's my personal yeah. opinion. Yeah. <laughs> Don't say Deacon Harold said. This. Yeah. Yeah. No, the Church allows Holy Mother Church allows both. And yeah. when I'm distributing communion, you know, if, if you know, I but at, you know sometimes they'll come up like they'll have their coat like these young the the, the mm -hmm. style today have their you know coats or their sleeves covering. I'm like. Can you move your sleeve down yeah. so I can place Jesus wow. in your in that kind yeah. of thing? It just yes. they're just not conscious of it. They don't know it's you know? Jesus. You said it. Yeah. Let me yeah. place it's... Jesus. If they knew that was Jesus, even let's Muslims talk about say, this. Yeah. Uh, this is an important point. It's very important. Uh, again, I invite you. I've got uh, the live feed posted. Post your question, but I have a question that we is on everyone's heart. Those who go to church, uh, now we, we could go to church, tick the box, go on Sunday, and we, we, we talk about giving your, can't you give God one hour of your, of your week? What's wrong with that statement? Giving God one hour of your week. I mean, Just there's, there's a lot wrong. I could, I could think of a lot now. Yes. I used to tell people that. 
And, and can't you just give God one hour? It's like you're begging the person, well, hold on, we've got to reverse this. Hang on. It's not what you go to church and you're just, you're bundying off and you give God an hour and you feel good about yourself when you're done. Tell us. Think, think about it like this. What's going on? Think about it like this. There's a there's 168 hours in a week. Mm. Okay. Now imagine someone who you say that you love more than anyone or anything else in the world, and you want to, and you only have one hour a week with this person. All right. So you say, I'm really looking forward to seeing this person. Then you get there late, and then while the person is trying to talk to you, who you, who you love more than anything is trying to talk to you, you're like looking on your phone, your your mind's wandering, you're thinking, boy, boy, I hope that the restaurant line not too long after I leave here today, and you're fidgeting and you're all this stuff, and then you leave before the, the hour is over. But yet you say you love this person more than anything else. That, to me, sounds like give God an hour. Yeah, We should be giving God our whole lives. You know, everything that we have, everything that we are. What does that look like? We should be giving like? the offering that to God. What does that Our whole mean? life is an offering. All right, so look. Um, what God calls us, and he's inviting us into a relationship of intimate, personal, loving, and life-giving community. He's inviting us to share his life. So we have two options. You can say yes to that invitation, or you can say no to that invitation. All right? Because this goes all back to the garden. Yes. You know? Uh, so we, our, our first parents had a choice. They chose no. And that no was shown by taking the fruit of the tree and eating it. You know, I'm God. I decide for myself. No one tells me what to do. I don't need to organize church. All I need to do is be a good person. That's not a response to God's invitation to love and life and intimacy and communion. You know, the response is, how do I become the person who God created me to be? How do I fulfill my purpose for being on this earth? That's how we say yes. Mm -hmm. um, and so in, in order to respond properly to God's invitation, we have to give our whole selves, our whole lives, just like Jesus did on the cross. That's the example. Jesus says, no greater love than to lay down your life for your friends. And He showed, this is the example that we are to follow. And we need to do that in our own lives. Die to ourselves every day to live for Christ. That means we die to everything that separates us from his love. You know, because we're we're slaves in this culture today. We're slaves to pornography. We're slaves to work. We're slaves to this culture of death. Mm -hmm. We're slaves to the cultural way of thinking. For example, let's be real. Most universities, even in the United States, are indoctrination centers, not places of learning. Let's be real. These universities are supposed to be places that teach young people how to think. They've now become places where they teach young people what to think. Yeah. You know, it's it's a, a, a completely yeah. different experience. So that's what we're what we're up against. And the only way you respond to that is to give everything of your life to God, to hold nothing back of yourself from His love. And that's a choice mm -hmm. that we make. You can say yes to that, or you can say no to that. And that decision has eternal consequences. Heaven. Or hell, and by the way, hell is real. <laughs> Did you just? You say just, that? You just uh, uh, but you, I mean, you yeah, just heard yeah, yeah. what this, the, the, the news yeah. may making the news yeah. about the head of the Jesuits saying it's just a, it's just an idea, it's just a literary construct. It's a, oh no, hell is real. Jesus talks more about hell in the Gospels than he does about heaven. Why? He doesn't want us to go there. I mean, the devil is real, sin is real, hell is real. Eternal consequences for our actions on this earth. Is real. Jesus said the road to heaven is narrow and very few will find it, but everybody thinks they're going to go there and they're not. That's right. I guarantee you, there are people listening right now that if they would get into a car accident today, they would die and go to hell. And this is, this is not, this is no joke. No. You know, we have to make sure that we are always prepared. And Jesus says parable after parable, like the women with their lamps. Uh, like, right, the bridegroom is coming, and that's actually based on a real thing. It's called the, the Nisuin. It's the second part of the marriage ceremony for Jews. And so they'd have to be prepared because when the bridegroom comes, the preparation would have to be made quickly for the wedding feast. Now, he wouldn't come in the middle of the night. Jesus was making the point that you don't know the hour. I mean, normally that would not happen, that they would come at night like that. That would be unusual. But Jesus is making a point. You don't know when the bridegroom is going to come back. Who's the bridegroom? Christ. Mm -hmm. 
You don't know when he's going to come back. So you need to be ready. The women who who lamps weren't lit, you know, they said, oh, give me some. Well, there's not enough for you and me. You need to go get some stuff on your own. So they went to finally, okay, I get it now. And they went to get the, the, the oil for their lamps. Meanwhile, the bridegroom shows up, closes the door, and they're like, hey, uh, I got my lamps now. My, he goes, what did he say? I don't know who you are. Hold on. Uh, that's eternal consequences. You, you think, I'm going to go to heaven. All I got to do is be a good person. I don't need church. I don't need Eucharist. I don't need sacraments. I just need to be good. You know what? You're going to be the one. Uh -huh. Jesus, let me in. I don't know who you are. That's reality. You know, so not trying to scare anybody, but this, this Jesus teaches us this himself. Mm -hmm. This is not Deacon Harold. This is the gospel. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. This is the gospel. Yeah. So we always need to be ready and prepared to, and that's the beautiful thing about covenant. It's when it's not about me, myself, and I. That's the, that's the Trinity that culture worships. It's not about that. For us, it's when you give yourself away in love, is when you truly find yourself in God. That's the, and that's the power of the cross. Mm -hmm. That's the witness and example that Christ calls us to. And that's how we make, we don't just give an hour to God. We give our entire lives to God. And that hour is just to go and say thank you as a family, yes. right? You're not in church by yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, it's when the family of God comes together and we give that Eucharistain in Greek, that thanksgiving, yeah. you know, for everything that God has given us. That's all he asks. Yeah. It's just, just this, and, and we're in a, it's a relationship. You know, and you say thank you, and I love you, and I, you mean everything to me. You know, and what if you never said that to your wife? That's right. Yes, Christine. Charbel, yeah. you never tell me you love me. Well, you know I love you. Yeah, I mean, it's nice to hear it every once in a while. That's you know, right. you that's know, right. and, and and so that's what. That's you know, what, I love you, Christine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, and so so that's what it is. It's just letting you know um, this exchange, and yeah. what happens to that massive exchange. Christ gives himself to us in the Eucharist to sustain us, and we give ourselves back to him. So it's a relationship. And with it's that beautiful. mindset, all of a sudden, Mass goes from something that you have to do to something that you, yes. get, you get to do. Yes. I, I don't something even like the language, yeah. like yeah. holy days of obligation. Yeah. yeah. Eh, to me, it should be holy days of opportunity. Yes. <laughs> I like that better. Yeah. All right. I like that better. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, you're, you're, you're right. And, and so then it, maybe you can speak personally, but, okay, for those who are not there yet, many people are going to Mass. Not still not knowing why they're there. They just know. Unfortunately, let's be real as well. In our church, we've had really boring preaching. Some from some priests. Sorry, fathers out there, but we've got to fix our game and lift our game. We're not connecting with young people. We're really out of touch. We we've just got to be real about where we are as a church. Um, and so I actually am on agree with with the secular world or even even our Protestant brothers and sisters when they come and. You come and they feel like they're not being fed. Now, that's not true. They are being fed because they don't know what's going on. But you can't blame people on the outside. Their experience of church and mass isn't very fulfilling or uplifting. How do we pierce through that and let them know you are receiving something that is transforming? So, and okay. So, for, ex so for example, um, a, a lot of people say that mass is boring because they don't know why they're there. Yeah. They're there because like, when you're young, your mom and dad makes you go. Or when you're a teenager, you go because you have to, uh, the priest has to tick off, sign off the piece of paper and tick off a list that you went to Mass or else you can't go to confirmation, you can't go on some trip or something like that. that that's not a reason to go to Mass. Um, you go to Mass because you're in love. You're, in, you're so much in love, you can't imagine your life without this other person in, in your life. That's why you go to Mass, because you're in love. But you have to know why you're there. And so that's why this the mass resource that we have. Yes. Not just not trying to just plug it, but what I do in there is I go through every part of the mass, and I connect. When you're watching the priest, what is he doing? Why is he saying what he's saying? And what does that action have to do with my life every day? That's the connections. Because now, once you get, I'll, I'll give you an example. You know, at the offertory, you you see the well, the deacon would do it normally, um, but. You, you know, if there's no deacon there, the priest would do it, who's still a deacon, by the way, which is why he does it. Because remember, when, when a man is ordained a priest, he's still a deacon. He gets the priesthood added to his diaconate. Mm. So he's always still a deacon and he's a priest, right? But the deacon normally does. It takes a drop of water and drops it into the chalice, which, of course, at that point still has wine in it. Why? You see it every week. Because mm. it can't be separated. Once it's there, it can't be separated. 
Yeah, so what does a drop of water represent, though? Us. Yeah, this has, yeah. it has what's called polyvalent meaning, right? Mm. That's what I love about being Catholic, because yeah. everything means something. So if you look at the crucifix, you notice that the, the Lord's side is pierced, right? So when the Longinus speared the Lord the side, what came out? Water. Blood and water, water. right? Mm. And the early church fathers will say things like the blood represented the sacrament of the Eucharist, the water represented baptism, two of the three sacraments that are born from the side of Christ. So the, the church is born from the side of Christ. Like the, in Genesis, the, the bride came forth from the side of the bridegroom. So the church is born from the side of Christ. And so um, what, what else did that drop of water represent? Like you said, Charbel, us, our hopes, our dreams, mm. our fears, our joys, mm. our sorrows, everything we have and everything we are are represented in that drop of water. And why does the deacon drop it in? Because who does the deacon represent at the altar? The people. The priest represents Christ in persona Christi. And notice he wears the stole around his yeah. neck. That's the yoke of Christ. That's like, remember Jesus, my yoke is easy, my burden yes. is light. He takes on that yoke of Christ. The deacon also wears a stole, but he wears it across. Why? He represents the, the deacon represents the people of God. So the people are yoked to Christ. So the stole, in a sense, is pointing toward the priest, pointing toward Christ. You know, right. that's why yeah. the it's the same stole as the priest, by the way. It's not a different stole. It's just worn differently, showing that the people are yoked to Christ. Right. And so the deacon representing the people at the Christ in that drop of water drops it in. And as you said, Mark, can you, once the water is in, can you take it out again? Right. That's the point. That mm. in that Eucharist, what's happening at that Mass, our lives are so connected with Christ and that sacrifice that we cannot separate our lives from him. That's the point. All done in a matter of just seconds, and we just see it every week, and we don't stop to think of the power of that action. You know, what does the deacon say? Or the priest say when he drops the water in? Um, I do it in Latin English. By, by the mystery of this water and wine, May we come to share in the divinity of Christ, Philippians chapter 2, who humbled himself to share in our humanity, mm -hmm. right? So uh, 2 Peter 1, 4, beautiful. Yeah. You know, direct references to scripture and our connection with Christ in that Eucharist. In the Maronite, right? I'll just add that to what you've just said. Uh, the words that the priest uses is, you have united your divinity with our humanity and our humanity with your divinity. Those are the words he uses. And, you know, we have deacons and subdeacons. So the deacon, as you're saying, he wears the sash that points towards the priest. The subdeacon wears the sash on the other side. So it shows the different levels of the diaconate as well. So I just want to Beautiful. And the in. prayer that you guys say before communion, oh, that's, yeah. oh my goodness, yeah, that is awesome. We need something like that yeah. in the Latin rite, you know. Awesome. I mean, we, so I mean, we said, Lord, I'm not worthy that you should come under my roof. The, the, the words that the soldier said, mm. you know, was healed. I mean, that's fine, but... I love, I mean, you're focusing on, you know, I, what I'm about to receive is mm. truly Jesus. Oh, yes. man, yes. that is awesome. I wish we had something so that when people, that's the last words they hear before they get up to go I'm to receive Jesus, Jesus in, in the Eucharist. Mm. You know, they're reaffirming that, yes, I am about to unite mm. myself with the living God in this incredible sacrament of his mercy and of his love. Oh, man, that's wow. just... Oh, man, yeah, I love being Catholic, man. Yes, Come on, man. Yes. How much of the Mass do we just take for granted that's yes. going to happen because it happens every week, and we're not actually thinking yeah. about what's happening, though. Yeah. And if, it's an encounter. If we do start yeah. thinking about what everything means, why it's happening, then all of a sudden the less than inspiring homily becomes an annoyance rather than a hindrance. And the choir that sing out of tune sometimes yeah, are just an annoyance. Matter. They're not a hindrance yeah. as such. They're just... And then you, you sure you can appreciate things when you get a great homily, you really appreciate it. When you get the choir, then they're spot on. You really appreciate it. You don't mind so much the kids running around on the ground and 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 being children, and because you're focused on what it is that you're really there for and what it is that's really happening, and the understanding of that just opens it right up for you. Yeah, absolutely. The rest is just icing. Absolutely. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that's why I think this 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 mass series that we did is so important because it walks you through the mass. And so now when you go to Mass, you're not just, okay, now you know, it has more meaning for you yes. now because now you see that action and understanding why it's happening and what it has to do with my life every day. And the more you experience that, the more you will get out of the Mass, the more you will understand what Christ is doing for you and the more it will impact your life outside of Mass. Mm -hmm. 
Because Mass is just, you know, that's where you see, but you have to go the rest of the week and live that Eucharistic faith in the world, to be witnesses of Christ's love to the world that overcomes the obstacles that are preventing us from having a truly dynamic relationship with the living God. You know, to break past that fear that keeps us stuck and keeps us comfortable. And we can't take our marriage, our job, our relationship with our kids to that next level because we're stuck and we're comfortable. And Jesus shows us something. You just look at a crucifix. You mm-hmm. want to take your life to the next level, you got to get uncomfortable. Yeah. yeah. So true. Yeah. And then daily mass, of course, becomes like, wow, the essence of, of it all. <laughs> you just hunger then. Once you know the mass and you understand it, you can't not go to mass every day. It just becomes not habitual, just a longing, a need. That's right. Yeah. You know, and, right. I think one of the keys is figuring out for people, how do you get to that faith, Sawa? So you have someone who's like, whatever, yeah, I, I go to church like every Sunday when I feel like it. Or, mm. yeah, my wife will take the kids to church. I'll just stay home and watch, uh, you know, uh, Australian rules football or something like that or, mm. or rugby or, or golf or whatever. You know, how do you get from that to, wow, I want to go to Mass every day? It's that intimate relationship. There's, there's a shift. I mean, yeah. there has a shift that happens. Yeah. That, so how do, you, how do you get that person to understand that, you know, sitting home and watching TV is not – the ultimate purpose and meaning of your life. They're, so they have this encounter, and let's say, okay, and then they start to make a switch, but how do you make it last? So that the priority now becomes, I am going to Mass. Forget the TV. Yeah. I am going to my Mass. I am leading my children to heaven. Yeah. And they live that every day. It becomes a part of their everyday lived experience and not just, okay, I, I'm going to do it for a month and then I'm going to fall off mm-hmm. and go back to my old habits again. Mm-hmm. What that, I think that how... What mm. has to be touched in that person? It has to be a need. They have to you find see? a need for it. To make so where it becomes a priority now. Yeah. My faith is now a priority. You make yeah. a total one eighty shift from their priorities before to their priorities now. Mm. And I think when you hear people's testimonies and stories, I think it's that truly that encounter with Christ. Um where where they're where they they're not just thinking about Christ, they're living Christ. They're living. Yeah. You know, and, and I think that's where Perusia comes in to help People begin now. Perusia can't do it by so you need the Holy Spirit. Yeah. You know, I mean, be arrogant and say if you just listen to this Perusia CD or MP3, boy, you're gonna no. Yeah. That's wish. that's part of the journey because yeah. we're all called to witness to our faith. But it's that seed that the Holy Spirit then has to start tilling that's that right. soil yeah. and start working that person's heart. Yeah. And the more we can be there to support someone like that and to show them, yes, this is what... And it, they'll find joy. They'll find so many things in their life. They'll be kicking themselves. Absolutely. Why did I get this earlier? Yeah. You know, why did I think about this earlier? Why wasn't this part of my life? My father was like that. You know, when my father turned from... I mean, I, I just thought he was going to go to hell. I mean, I just can be real. I just I thought he'd never, ever, ever, ever change. But then... You know, the Lord flipped the switch on me with him. And, um, <laughs> you know, and it, but it taught me a huge lesson. Um, if that, if a change like that could happen to my father, a man I literally wrote off for dead, imagine when someone that has, uh, or just a weak faith opened themselves. I mean, my father's life was completely changed, completely transformed after having that encounter. How did it start? Mm-hmm. Watching me on EWTN. Now, my father never went to church, but he's watching EW10 because I was on. You see, so sometimes even the children evangelize their own parents. Yes. You know, God uses all these different ways, Absolutely. all these different ways of bringing people closer to him. Sure does. And I think the more we can witness to that, I think um, the more in love people will be with, the, with Christ Amen. and with the faith. Amen. I wish we could hear this all day. Um, we are out of time, unfortunately. Look how quick that was. Oh, man. <laughs> I thought we were going to take a break and come back no, for, no. for the second half. <laughs> yeah, <that's right>. <laughs> <laughs> it went so quick. We are here every single week, uh, 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. Uh, and, of course, it's on the live Facebook Live. So those who aren't here, this will be remain on our page. So feel free to share it. On the Perusia Media um, website, on the blog section, you can see all of this categorized. And uh, if you haven't yet signed up to the Perusia email, get onto perusiamedia.com. Pop your email in and you'll get all the notifications of what we do every week. So please join the family and get in touch with us. Get in touch with one of the talks. So if you've got one week, we've basically got Sydney and I've got a question here. He's in Melbourne. Unfortunately, not in Melbourne this year. He will be in Albury though. So whether or not you can get to Albury, it's a three-hour drive. But uh, Albury, Wagga, Mossvale, Nowra, 
Penrose Park, Sydney. So it's about six different cities. Within Sydney, a lot of action as well. So we've got lots of events in Sydney. Get onto the Prusa Media site and go to the upcoming events and you'll see all of those details on there. And the pilgrimage, not too late. If you want to join, uh, please get in touch with us and we can organise all of that. Visitations of Mary. Come join Deacon Harold and myself to Lords Fatimas, Portugal, France and Spain. I'd love to have you join us for a life-changing pilgrimage. Thank you again. Thank you, Salwa. You can also watch Deacon Harold on yes, Morning on Glory the app, the EWTN That's right. app, Absolutely. The Morning Glory. <laughs> Absolutely, yes. So, so, that, so he's on Morning Glory yes. every... Um, so you can download yeah, the I haven't the been EWTN. on so far because of the, event, the time change yeah. here <laughs> and the events happening in the evening, which is the morning there. So I haven't been on yet. This week. I'm going to try to be on with, you know, when I can, but... Uh, but so yeah, they, lots they have and someone filling in for me this week. Dr. Matthew Bunsen's been on the last couple of Yes, months. he's oh, yeah. great. Mm. That guy's written like 50 books, man. <laughs> he's like a machine. <laughs> well, um, thank you very much, Deacon. Oh, uh, we'll pray for the rest here. of the, the tour and your, your ministry. Uh, thank you for what you do. Um, and, and please know of our prayers. Please pray for thank this you. man. We need him. We need him out there doing and spreading the, the gospel. So God bless you. Thanks, Thank Mark. Thank you so much. Thank you, Shabbat. Let's do this Thanks again next you. week. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> next yeah. week, join me. We're going to be launching uh, my story, uh, How Islam Led Me Back to Christ. Deacon Howard wrote the foreword to that book, so I'm privileged to have him in the studio again, and this time we'll be on through that. So get ready. God bless you, everyone. God and bless. until next week, have a blessed week. From the words of St. John Paul II. This is no time to be ashamed of the gospel. It is the time to preach it from the rooftops. Do not be afraid to break out of comfortable and routine modes of living in order to take up the challenge of making Christ known in the modern world. Let us open our ears and our hearts to listen to the answers of our long lost questions. Join us every Wednesday morning at 8 a.m. for Perusia Hour, inviting expert guest speakers every week as we discover the fullness of truth live on The Voice of Charity.